Hello and welcome to this free training video. Now, if you're watching this video, you might be watching it on YouTube. Uh, you might have just booked in a call with one of my team members or my growth consultant, um, or you're actually looking to book in a call with one of us um, and learn a little bit more about what we do, how we do it, how we help restaurants, um, but more importantly, how we can possibly help your restaurant. But regardless of that, maybe you're here for some free value. You know how you can go ahead and implement the step-by-step -step, uh, systems that I'm gonna show you in this specific video for your own restaurant um, to see how you can add more revenue to your own business then that's also completely fine um i would just request that you know for whatever reason you're watching this definitely watch it till the end because you're here for a reason that reason is to you know help your business grow your restaurant and better your own life and so if all you have to do for that um and with this training that can possibly help you achieve that what you want to do then you know i would definitely suggest sitting here and watching the next 15 20 minutes is definitely something that you should do um and not something that you completely skip over right because like i said if this is something that you're actually Going, if growing your restaurant is one of your priorities, then this is going to be vital in helping you do that. So that being said, in this free training video, I'm going to show you exactly how we go ahead and add an extra £50,000 to our restaurant partners monthly recurring revenue whilst blowing up their profitability using our AGR 2.1 formula, as well as how you can go ahead and do that for your own restaurant. And like I said, my name is Gurveer Singh. Um, my partner, who is the co-founder at Novak Media and our Novak Partners, program is adam as well um you might have heard of him or you might have heard about novak media through me but that being said we are the managing partners at novak media now just to show you before we jump into the video that we know exactly what i'm talking about this restaurant specifically is uh, one of our partners we added an extra ten thousand ten and a half thousand pounds to their revenue within a single month as you can see the month is right there same month over here completely tracked um straight through the same program um, and thesis that i'm going to walk you through over here right and then another restaurant that we helped utilizing the exact same process that I'm going to show you here was Emmanuel. Uh, just to give you a little background, he is an experienced restauranter, uh, restaurateur. He struggled with revenue fluctuations like all restaurants do to some degree, despite working with various and multiple agencies. However, upon joining forces with us in October of 2023 for his bar and grill in London, we introduced him through our ads method, our optimized, we built out optimized landing pages for him and created the customized offers that we knew he would need in order to get more attention and convert these customers into high tech leads um, and this approach obviously resulted in a significant success with him adding an over uh, uh, with him adding over twenty four thousand pounds in track bookings um, and revenue by November right and obviously once you get that through the door you need to retain that and so with our retention strategies he's able to consistently re consistently yield revenue growth um, and meet his revenue goals every single month because of this exact same system and as you can see twenty four thousand twenty four point three thousand pounds in the month of November as well, right? And so this clearly shows you that what I'm going to show you today works. Um, and for me to say, you know, that you're going to add an extra fifty thousand pounds to your monthly recurring revenue within six months is clearly an achievable goal. If you know Emmanuel was able to do that, um, able to do half of that in a single month, right? So uh, one sixth of the time and already fifty percent of the way there. And this is the exact same process that we use for multiple of our partners. Um, obviously, everything is customized because, because not every restaurant is the same. Um, and we don't take a cookie cutter approach. But at the end of the day, business is business. And there's certain key components that make the difference in every single business. And that's the exact same process that we took Emmanuel from and the other restaurant as well through the doomsday flywheel that a lot of restaurants sit in to the leverage restaurant market leader flywheel that I'm going to take you through as well. But like I said, in this free training, what I will walk you through today is I'm going to show you testimonials and case studies to show you what we're telling you actually works, right? I'm not going to be like one of those agencies that say we're going to do this, we're going to do that um, and not show proof for that. So that's definitely something I'm going to do today. I'm also going to walk you through the three main pillars that we implement for restaurants to increase their revenue and profit, which you can actually go ahead and, and you know implement for your own restaurant today. So actual actionable steps the next thing i'm going to do is show you exactly what we do how we do it and why it works better than anything else at the moment and then the lastly i'm going to show you the exact next steps you can take to help your restaurant reach the revenue goals it deserves within the next quarter right so four simple uh, four simple steps show you that it's worked before show you the three main pillars you need in order for it to make it work show you exactly how we make it work and next how you can go ahead and make it work for your own restaurant right and the reason you know i actually went ahead and you know, went through the effort of making this almost 20 page doc um, for restaurants is because I understand that while every restaurant marketing agency tells you about, you know, how many customers they can guarantee you or how many bums and seats they're going to get your restaurant, um, maybe even a classic money back guarantee. 
I actually want to do something else, right? I want to provide you with the insights that can actually help your restaurant turn into a high margin, high leverage wealth generating machine. And so in this video, like I said, I'll be walking you through the main three and a half bottlenecks or constraints that are keeping restaurants just like yours from reaching an annual multi seven figure run rate and exactly what we do or, you know, what you can do to systemize your restaurant's customer acquisition and retention whilst increasing your EBITDA making it something you can you know duplicate or implement across the multiple locations that you may have or to increase the valuation of your company so you can sell it in the future so if that sounds something that you'd like to watch then stick around for like i said the next 15 to 20 minutes and i'll take you through all of that so that being said the reason you've clicked on this video or the reason you're watching this video is most likely because you're a restaurant owner that has a restaurant or multiple restaurants doing in between 45 to almost a hundred thousand pounds per month on average like so if it's more or less that's also fine um you're watching this because you might feel like your current operating structure um is hard to scale due to the fact that you know the bigger you scale the more complex it becomes all just for a slight increase in profit due to your low margins. This might be for you if you're starting to feel the impact of competition and how big of a commodity you've become within your market, right? This may be for you if your business lacks some sort of predictability, diverse income streams, so you only have it through reservations or only through takeaways. Um, it lacks consistent cash flow and you keep and you struggles to keep your margins at a steady state, right? This obviously, as any business owner, would leave you in an anxious state, which makes it difficult to envision how long you can sustain working within your business. And this is also for you if you can't retain your customers month after month and exponentially grow your back end. And even if you can, right, you know, get people through the door, you haven't figured out how to actually go ahead and make more of that money. And even if you do go ahead and try, you know, and even if you do go ahead and try to solve this problem, you end up solving problems that don't really matter, right? Like, you know, getting an uh, advertising agency to solve emails for you or do email marketing, right? This obviously creates so much complexity that it just doesn't end up being worth it. And so, like I said, the goal of the short training is to give you a walkthrough on the possibility of transforming your restaurant from a commodity within your local market to a brand name, which helps you grow month on month with less stress, no additional cost and zero added operational drag. And I promise you, I know as a restaurant owner, you might be freaking out thinking what I'm saying is the most impossible thing in the world, but it's actually possible, right? For example, take who was um, you know, this is one of those messages that we allow in our company where our clients are complaining because this complaint is obviously something that we may like to hear, right? You know, Kua sent us this message. He said, hey guys, I had to turn off the ordering system for us because we're just getting far too many orders and we don't have enough staff, right? If that's a complaint that we're going to get, at least I'm happy that his restaurant is growing month on end. Um, and it's a, you know, a problem that is easily solvable rather than not having any orders come through at all. And so, like I said, the goal of this short training is to turn your business into a leverage machine, which can either, you know, you can sell off or, you know, you can sell for multiple seven figures or retire off of, right? And so that being said, I'm going to take you through the thesis behind the restaurant growth formula and the three main bottleneck constraints, as well as, um, you know, as well as deliveries that you can go ahead and implement to make this system work for you. So that being said, the first thing is that increasing revenue streams that allows you to increase revenue flow, which allows you to increase profit margins and maintain costs whilst decreasing stress is actually possible. Okay. Now you may think I'm crazy because like I said, we've been in the restaurant industry ourselves. We obviously have worked with restaurants in over 13 different market segments, 13 different niches, and we've owned over almost yeah over 11 restaurants ourselves. And so, you know, we understand the problems that you guys face. And so when I show all of this, it's coming from a, re a relatable um, a relatable background, right? And so a lot of these things that, you know, we might say that you don't hear from marketing agencies is because they don't have the depth of understanding that we have within the restaurant and food and beverage space, right? And so when I say that this is possible, you might be freaking out, but I promise you it actually is. Now, one of my, uh, you know, someone I look up to, Warren Buffett, he has this quote, which I thought was super fitting for this situation. And he says that, should you find yourself in a chronically leaking boat, energy devoted to changing vessels is likely to be more productive than energy devoted to patching leaks. Now, the reason I say this is because, as I said, someone who comes from a, a um, over 11 years in the restaurant uh, industry itself, you know, the restaurant model is notoriously difficult, right? It's low ticket, meaning, you know, they pay us between 20 to 50 pounds. It's low margins. It's high saturation. 
there's low differentiation, meaning, you know, I could walk down a street, um, I could walk down a high street in London, and there'll be almost 25, 30 different restaurants. So there's low differentiation, and there's five of those are pizza places. And the worst of all is that there's a tiny market size, right? There's only so far someone is going to come to your restaurant. Um, someone who's living in Birmingham is not going to come to your restaurant in, you know, the middle of York, as an example. And so there's only so far someone would come to you, meaning you have a tiny market size. And so getting customers through the di- through the door all the time is not sustainable. And it takes you further away from zero marginal cost of replication, keeping you capped by your city and its population, right? And so that's obviously a big problem. So how do you actually go ahead and break free of the trap or the five main issues, which is low ticket, low margins, high saturation, low differentiation, and having a tiny market size? So let me give you an example of Punjab, right? It's an Indian restaurant who is consistently getting customers through the door and maintaining or lightly growing month on end. But the problem that they had is that they understood that they were stuck in the restaurant rat race. Okay. And what that means is every time they grew or had more customers come through their door, their costs would go their costs would grow linearly or exponentially with this growth, right? Tying them to low profit margins whilst also increasing their op- um, operational drag heavily, moving them further away from zero marginal cost of replication as possible. Now, what if you don't know what zero marginal cost of replication means is that for every single customer you get through the door, how does your cost rise with that customer? Okay. And so, for example, if 10 customers come through your door and your costs don't rise, you are at zero marginal cost of replication, which is what software companies, basically a a software company is almost zero marginal cost of replication, which is why, you know, you hear so many uh, stories of, you know, uh, uh, people selling their software company for billions because it's one of the most profitable uh, business models there is. And so... Why does that relate to you and what does that mean for your restaurant? Well, what Punjab did specifically is they understood that the only way they could increase their revenue and profit margins whilst maintaining costs and decreasing stress as well as their operational track, which would lead them closer to zero marginal cost of replication, was that they had to adjust their restaurant model. Okay, and they did this or how we help them do this is by increasing their revenue streams and creating a vertical scaling system by adding a higher ticket, higher leverage offer on their back end. And so what this means is kind of like, for example, a private dining or a catering event where the ticket is much higher, you know, where people are spending between 2,000, 5,000, over 10,000 pounds with you. And so therefore, you know, they already had a kitchen that they could cook in. The staff they had were already there. They already had the proven recipes and they had the audience that, and we utilized the audience they already had to create this high ticket offer, which, which, which they could charge anywhere between, you know, like I said, 2000 to 8,000 pounds, right? Which is equivalent to the same if they had 80 covers at the restaurant while spending a fraction of the time on fulfillment. So for example, if I show you right here, if a restaurant owner specifically, or if a restaurant has a system that is in place, like what I just showed you, what would happen is with the 80 covers example, is that, you know, let's just say the the restaurant has 20 tables with four people per table, meaning that they have 80 covers in the restaurant. We already know that, you know, this means that you have stressed or not enough staff. If you don't have, if you have stressed staff or you have not enough staff to accommodate these 80 covers, you're going to have, you know, annoyed, annoyed staff and overworked chefs. This leads to extensive operational drag, which means there's wrong orders, long wait times, customers turning away, meaning you have a bad or average customer experience. And all of that, just in return for minimal margins that we get with, you know, when we see just bringing customers through the door. Whereas if you got in a private event or a catering or a venue visit for 80 people that was pre-organized, you could utilize the same kitchen, same chef, minimal staff because they're all well prepared beforehand, which gets you closer to zero marginal cost of replication because you haven't had to add any new costs to this, right? Which is easier to fulfill. You have zero kitchen waste, so you have zero food waste and you allow your chefs because it allows your chef to execute the food efficiently. This leads to great customer experience, great experience for the other people at the event as well, allowing you to close more deals, build your brand and get to charge even higher ticket, right? Between 2000 to 15,000 pounds per inquiry. And it's so simple, but people don't realize how important this is for your restaurant. And what that did for Punjab is that they mean it had, they had more leverage, right? They were able to increase revenue through the higher ticket offer that was easier to fulfill. Really, it was much easier to fulfill because they had this pre-planned in advance. They had increased profit margins closer to the 20% mark because of the fact that they could buy the produce in bulk, 
for predictable quantities. They didn't have to hire staff, um, you know, off the whip. And more importantly, they were able to manage their costs more efficiently. They were able to decrease wastage due to the predictability of the event. They utilized the same kitchen to serve both in-house and event customers, right? Moving them closer to the zero marginal cost of replication. They utilized the same chefs to fulfill on the demand, moving them, uh, you know, like I said, closer to zero marginal cost of replication. But more importantly, they were able to use the cash from this higher margins and the increase in cash flow to reinvest in the business, inject more cash into the business and help advertise the business more, increase the systems, I mean, uh, make the systems more efficient um, and actually utilize that to help them be in a position where they could grow their restaurant a little bit more than that, right? And this this made their growth across their regular sit down and takeaway offerings, as well as catering grow exponentially, right? As an example over here, with one campaign that we ran for them with their catering, with a great catering event, they had, um, you know, obviously it was a big event, a private event, but more importantly, because of our conversion mechanisms that I'm going to show you through all those, you know, 300, 400 people that had come to that event with the system that we utilized, we were able to get them 293 new customers from that event into the restaurant again, which allowed them, like I said, again, to increase their uh, regular sit down as well. So just the fact that you have catering doesn't mean that you negate sit down. It is an exponential cycle that helps you grow all aspects of the business. And they were able to get even 30, almost 1300 database opt-ins for people who were interested in booking a catering event as well. And that's just in 15 days of a single campaign. And so you can see that, you know, how important that is for any restaurant to have a system that can do that for them. The second most important thing that people don't understand is that restaurant customer acquisition or the rest of the restaurant customer acquisition model is broken, right? And this is exactly why advertising agencies won't save you because they can't help you, uh, your business grow long term, right? And so when I say that restaurant marketing is a scam or that, you know, the restaurant, the restaurant model was actually never meant for marketing, this is exactly what I mean, right? And so the restaurant customer acquisition model is broken. The way that restaurants acquire customers nowadays is completely broken. And the reason I say this is from personal experience again, right? A couple of weeks ago, I was listening to one of my friends who owns a casual fine dining, fine dining Asian fusion restaurant, vent his frustrations with his new venture, right? This was his second restaurant and he was steadily hitting around 84,000 pounds per month in turnover. However, he'd been stuck there for a couple of months now with some dips due to the fact that, you know, obviously cost of living crisis, but the problem was he was never able to break this glass ceiling, right? It was, again, 84,000, it was somewhere that was enough, but not enough for him to be proud of because he knew that there was so much more potential that this business had. And like I said, he'd gone through multiple marketing methods, creative agencies, well, paid ad agencies from the States who would get him some initial growth, but, you know, nothing that was consistent. Um, and like I said, after all, uh, you know, people assume that marketing can grow any business. But obviously that's not the case. And the reason for this is because the patchy solution's not working due to the fact that the restaurant as a business model was never actually meant to be marketed for. Now, I know that's a crazy claim to say that, you know, restaurants aren't actually built for marketing, but I'm going to explain that to you in, in a very simple mathematical equation that anyone could understand exactly what I'm saying, right? So let's just say that this imaginary restaurant marketing agency charges you £1,100 in total for their monthly service, right? Including ad spend, right? These advertising agencies, they say that going to run... Uh, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, that kind of stuff. Let's just say they charge you uh, £1,100 in total uh, for the month of their service, including ad spend, which I promise you is like the cheapest you'll find on the market, which means uh, 600 in ad spend and 500 for their monthly service, which like I said, no one is you know, charging you less than £500 for their monthly service. Um, now the industry average margin is 10%, okay? And so the break-even cost of your marketing, right, would have to be £11,000 per month added. And that's not including the cost of goods, of free items for offers. So if you're paying a restaurant marketing agency 1100 pounds, they have to bring you ex uh, they have to bring you a minimum of 11000 pounds just for you to break even on that 1100 pounds. Now, let's just say your average order value is 25 pounds. They would have to get you 440 new customers in 13 days. They would have in 30 days. They would have to get you 14 new customers every single day for the next month with an ad spend of 500 pounds in budget. And so what they're saying is they're going to get you, they're going to, just for you to break even, you have to get customers through the door for under one pound or one pound and 13 cents. That is ridiculously cheap and it's not going to happen, right? It's almost unrealistic standard to operate on, to expect that Facebook, Instagram, and all of these people are going to get people walking through your door by you giving one pound to them, okay? 
And the main problem is this is what most advertising agencies are doing. And and the surprising thing is restaurants are getting scammed because the way that a lot of these agencies overcome this is by simply saying that, well, according to some study, most people come back to your restaurant seven times a year, which therefore, you know, you can just times your um, RO, your ROI by seven times because they're going to come back again. To me, that sounds pretty woo-woo. And I could never look into my client's eyes and say that to them, right? And so, I mean... The, the main problem, like I said, is that having low margins and a low average order value makes the high rate of growth extremely difficult. And like I said, this is not the advertising agency's fault. They're not necessarily scamming you. They just don't have this depth of understanding into the restaurant world. OK, and so what I said is that this means that any real monetary effect or effort that they put into the marketing is like putting is like pouring water into a bucket with holes in it. It never brings you back a return long enough for you to sustain and justify spending, you know, thousands of pounds on these campaigns. And therefore, if direct acquisition, directly trying to get customers through the door in-house seating um, is not working for you and is not profitable, you have to solve the route of this problem and scale vertically. Now, what I mean by that is a lot of restaurants feel like they cap their growth and they have to open up more restaurants and scale horizontally, but they forget that they have so many new revenue channels or vertically scaled revenue channels that they can actually go ahead and optimize and bring, and you know, double or even triple their revenue. If you have sit down, you still have catering, you still have in-venue events, you have online ordering, you have your delivery section. There's so many more ways that you can increase your revenue by vertically scaling your rather, I mean, your restaurant rather than having to rely on, you know, um, opening up more locations before you even maximize your sales. And so what I mean by vertically scaling and to show you in this exact diagram as well, so you can understand why it's so important for any restaurant to actually, you know, pay attention to um, and understand, you know, why it helps them be more profitable is like I said here, okay, vertically scaling, utilizing a high ticket offer as an example, before you start opening more restaurant locations to increase the amount of cash you're collecting, which is called horizontal scaling. First, you need to optimize your current restaurant with all the untapped revenue streams it has, which if done correctly, can bring you 10 X the leverage of operating another location, which is called vertical scaling. And so, for example, if you're optimizing for direct acquisition, which is, you know, a 20 pound average order value compared to 1500 pound average order value to 10,000 pounds plus or average order value, people are like, OK, well, you know, that just gives me you know more of a headache because I'm charging almost, you know, 200 times that. But it's not because you get higher margins, you get closer to zero marginal cost of replication, you have a minimal operational track. You have a lower cost to fulfill and it's easier to fulfill, but more importantly, you're collecting more cash to reinvest. Why the hell are you even focusing on trying to get, you know, onesie, twosie tables into your restaurant and relying on these advertising agencies to do that for you? It makes zero sense. It's a complete waste of time and you're not going to grow. Okay. And so this was the first mistake he was making. You know, the guy I was talking about with the casual uh, Asian fine dining restaurant, right? This was the first mistake he was making. He was trying to get customers through the door with paid ads um, and the unit economics just made no sense for them. Now, that wasn't the only mistake he was making. It was the first mistake, but not the only one. And this is what leads me to his content and social media. Now, you may be thinking, well, you know, he failed because he was doing paid ads and I rely on influencers and organic content to grow my restaurant. But the issue is that, you know, he also had an extensive influencer marketing and social media program. He had guys coming in regularly making beautiful videos and graphics. And look, it was great. As I said, he was growing. But, you know, as we've discussed, he was not leveraged at the rate of growth. I mean, he was not leveraged and the rate of growth was so minimal, he could no longer recognize it. And the problem for this is because every single restaurant at your caliber between that 45 to 100,000 pound per month mark does have good visuals, they do have good socials, and they do have influencers coming to their restaurant. And so sure, you may have a loyal following and you may have some growth here and there. But if you're watching that, that probably isn't enough for you. And so, you know, if you are, if you are going ahead and, you know, taking these good visuals and you're relying on Instagram and things like that, you have to realize that other people in your same caliber are doing the exact same thing, which is the interesting part because it seems like no one's growing, right? And so why does posting not have the same effect as it used to? Well, you're essentially doing the exact same thing that everyone else is, but expecting the market to give you special treatment. That is literally the definition of insanity, okay? You're just becoming every single brunch place with flowers on the wall and, you know, taking a photo of smashed avocado on toast and thinking that you're going to grow your restaurant just like everyone else is. And that's not going to work. Right. And like Warren Buffett said, another quote that he said, which I really like, and, you know, I already told you I'm kind of a Warren Buffett geek, is that it's not how hard you row. It's more about what boat you're in. 
And so that's why I wanted to introduce the concept of real branding and the secret for it to solve the acquisition that I'm talking about, bringing customers through the doors and the retention, as well as the fact that you're dying with negative market cycles over the long run. Now, we have a quote in the company, which is our which is basically the motivation for building uh, the clients or partners that we work with, the most amazing brands that actually represents the value that their business provides and your story is because of the fact that every single pound you pay to acquire a new customer is the ignorance tax you pay for not having a real brand. And I'm going to show you an exact same example that Elias, the owner of Matty in uh, Canada, Ottawa, had the exact same problem, right? Before joining us, before joining the Novak Partners program, Elias had been in a situation that many restaurant owners are probably familiar with. He tried multiple marketing agency, agencies before, all promising him the world and delivering nothing in return. He was getting average, I mean, amateur work. He, they had no connection with his target audience. He didn't like the content style they were, they were doing for him in general. They completely missed the mark on customer advertising. I mean, their customer avatar. There was no, you know, there was kind of a lack of local awareness with the people around his restaurant. But more importantly, they were doing the same thing for two months and not getting any results. And the worst part about the situation is that what he found himself, I mean, the, the worst part about the situation that Elias found himself in was due to his operational cost. And so after joining the Novak Partners program, we immediately began implementing the paid ad strategy to drive his revenue with private dining bookings worth over $3,000 to inject the much needed capital into his business, right? And I'm going to show you why that's a huge part of it. And, you know, I'm going to show you the growth flywheel and why it all intertwines to actually make sure that there's a difference in your restaurant straight off the bat is because if his operational cost was high, we're not going to, you know, expect to post on his Instagram and that's going to reduce his operational cost. What he needed was a high injection of cash into the business before anything else. Okay, so that's what we did first of all. Then what we did, we had our creative team, our professional creative team, which was which has worked with over five hundred brands and celebrities to help them scale. We, you know, we had our creative team implement our customer, our custom, not our customer, but our custom built stomp organic content strategy that we utilize to help them get more high quality bookings instead of just low quality virality. That's the problem with a lot of media agencies. They say, we're going to make you viral. They say that we're going to get, get you more likes and comments, but you know, likes and comments isn't something you can deposit into the bank, which is why that we utilize the content to actually drive more revenue and get more bookings for your restaurant with the conversion mechanisms that we have in store. Now, I know everyone likes the followers and stuff, even if it may not make the biggest difference. And so, you know, Maddie still increased a following, a follow count of over 13,000 followers in just a matter of weeks. But the main, the main thing and the number one thing is that the combination of this high ticket sales strategy, as well as our content team implementing, you know, the conversion mechanisms for the attention we were generating them, allowed them to experience three private dining bookings a week at a minimum and consistent days of £14,000 in sale due to our widely successful campaigns and audience engineering, right? As you can see here. Crazy day today, 14K in steak and meat sales alone. Also had three private dining bookings this week alone. Keep it up, okay? This is the restaurant. You can check it out. It'd be Matty Ottawa on on uh, on Instagram so you can see some visuals and whatnot. But like I said, and the reason I'm telling you this is because, and, and the reason, you know, we built out an A-star content team in our company for our clients is because when studying the most successful restaurants or F&B businesses in the world, one thing that we realized that they all had in common is that they had built a brand so potent, people felt stupid saying no to them. Now, for example, I'll take an example of myself as well, not even my client this time, right? I was at the groceries the other day and I saw a bottle of Prime. Now, if you know you don't know what Prime is, it's basically a drink company that Logan Paul and KSI have made. These are what the bottles look like. If you, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've seen it. They did, uh, uh, they did almost a billion pounds in sales in their, in their second year of operating, right? And like I said, I had never tried one before after them doing a billion pound in sales. But like I said, because of their brand, it was almost harder for me to stop myself from buying it than to walking straight past it. And it's literally just flavored water. I had felt obligated to try it even just once. And like I said, no one had ever told me how amazing Prime was. It wasn't solving a problem of mine. Someone had not come to my door. The Monday I buy it, I just had this urge to taste it. And after trying and seeing how average it was, I did some research. Now, $275 million in their first year alone, but more importantly, by their second year, they did over a billion dollars in sales, right? In their second year. That is absolutely insane. And what's even crazier is the $275 million they did in their first year, they did that with zero money spent on marketing. 
And you may be thinking, well, how is that possible? But, you know, that's what Matty thought as well. When we told him we could help him reduce his operational costs and actually get consistent revenue, consistent private dining um, and all the things that we did for him, he was like, okay, well, you know, how is that even possible if you can do it and no one else has been able to do it? It's because we were able to build him a real brand that allowed him to generate infinite leverage. Now, we obviously have the growth creator flywheel that, I mean, the growth uh, restaurant flywheel, which I'll take you through and exactly show you the step-by-step -step system on that. But the main thing is that we were able to get him infinite leverage through just one of the mechanisms, which is having a real brand, right? And so he, we were able to, he was able to, I mean, what they were able to do is they were able to leverage um, in attracting attention. They had leverage in attracting attention with the real brand, right? Generate attention without needing to pay for it, not relying on paid ads, not relying on flyers, billboards, TVs, ads, radio ads. Right? These are all non-leverage activities, as in it's one-to-one -one return. So if you spend one pound on Facebook, you'll get the equivalent of what one pound on Facebook will give you, whereas having a brand is highly leveraged. I mean, like I said, KSI and Logan Paul didn't even spend a single dollar on marketing, but they generated $275 million in sales. Now you have leverage and owning attention as well with your brand. When you have a brand that actually resonates with market, people want to see more of you. They subscribe to you. They follow you. They give you their information. Essentially, they become customers of you and your you know, vision and your brand. But more importantly, you have leverage and market and being a market authority, right? The 30%, like I said, the 30% in commission that you pay to third-party delivery platforms like Uber Eats and Deliveroo is the ignorance tax you pay for not having a real brand. The money you spend paying platforms like Facebook and Instagram to generate you attention and acquire new customers is the ignorance tax you pay for not having a real brand. Having a brand allows you to reap the full rewards of your hard work and profit on what would have actually been your losses. And because of that market authority um, and, you know, the, the leverage that and because of that market authority influences part of your influencer strategy that you might have actually come to you to promote their pages, and not the other way around. OK, and just to show you exactly what I mean by the leverage flywheel that I've been talking about and why it makes such a big difference in generating high ticket, creating retention strategies and also building a real brand is because a lot of restaurants are actually stuck in this rat race, right? They start, you know, they have a cookie book cutter brand. First of all, when they have a cookie cutter brand, there's no differentiation in the market eyes. They become a commodity. They can become a commodity in the local market. When you're the same as everyone else, people have no incentive to come to you over your competition, which leaves you consistently chasing new customers out of your pocket. This means that you have terrible customer attention. When you have terrible customer attention, you rely on agencies um, to solve the issue of getting customers through the door, a problem which was never meant to be solved for. And so the problem is you're trying to attract new customers through the door, but you're not able to retain them. And so you're always, you know, chasing your own tail like a dog. What that means is you're continuously spending money on things that won't move the needle forward, meaning you have no leverage. You have nothing to invest in the business. When you have no leverage, you're stagnated in a growing market due to the inability of optimizing your restaurant closer to zero marginal cost of replication, leading you to lower margins. And because you have low margins, you're not able to reinvest back into the business, allowing you to you know, stay commoditized in the local market. And this is a very dangerous trap. And we see a lot of restaurants, or at least 90% of restaurants are in this position, especially if they're doing between 45 to 75,000 pounds. Now, you know, if you're actually going to use a leveraged restaurant flywheel model, and what we did for Maddie as an example, is we started with the high ticket offers. We injected cash into his business, right? High ticket on the front end, which allowed increased cash flow and capital, allowing him to leverage better talent and utilize better operations. So with the high ticket offers, we injected cash into his business, you know, allowing him to get capital influx, which becomes eventually exponential. This, the, the, uh, the influx of capital allows you to build a better brand, right? Because you're able to solve all the friction related to customer acquisition through the increase in capital. When you have a better brand, you get more customers through the restaurant, through the door. And because you're not a commodity anymore, you have higher frequency and higher retention. And so if you have high ticket on the front end, you get a lot of cash on the front end, but more important, you, you're able to exponentially grow your restaurant on the back end. The capital influx becomes exponential as well, allowing you to invest, to invest in better in, in infrastructure, operations, staff, and you know improve your service and experience. And so you can literally see just by increasing and having a system that gets you more high ticket offers through the front of your restaurant and not relying on that, right? A lot of people are like, okay, so do you just do catering? No, we don't. But it's one of the main things that we do to help your restaurant generate, like I said, you know, bookings worth north of 10,000 pounds on the front end. So you can actually go ahead and invest 
into building that brand that we obviously, you know, map out and strategize for you so you can continuously and effortlessly grow exponentially. Okay. And so there's a big difference. You have the choice as a restaurant owner to decide whether you want to be stuck in the rat race or you actually want to have a leverage restaurant. And so, you know, some people say, how do you build a brand? Well, having consistent, well-constructed message and clear communication behind what it takes um, and what makes you unique. This may be your food, venue and staff, but you know, what it mostly comes down to is the people. One of my key mentors, Sam Ovens, once said that people don't buy from businesses, they buy from people. And therefore you and your business's story is the unique selling point, right? This is what people are buying from. Okay. Now, like I said, a lot of people say, um, you know, I know all of that. That is great. Um, how do I go and actually execute this or communicate this to the market and actually go ahead and solve these, you know, shitty problems I'm facing. And the truth is, is you need talent. Like I said, you know, we have uh, our creative team is built of people who have scaled over 500 different F and B specific businesses, including restaurants, obviously as the majority. And so when I say talent, I mean, you leverage people who are smarter, more talented, and much more experienced than you in this game. People who have done this for brands time and time again, and have helped them from going to be just another restaurant to actually an intention generating restaurant machine. Now, the A players in this realm, like I said, as well, uh, as well as the other insights I've just gone through are not easy to find and they're definitely not cheap, which is why we actually made the process behind the transformation of your brand, catering deal flow, as well as customer retention as easy as possible. Now, before I show you, like I said, I promised you I'm going to show you exactly what we do, how we do it and how we can help your restaurant. Therefore, before I show you that, what I need you to understand is I have taken you through so much insights right now and so much knowledge that you have learned a lot, okay? But the main key, and, the, and, and this is something that we utilize in our, in our own company and what we suggest our restaurant partners or the mindset that we, uh, we suggest our restaurant partners take is understanding that successful businesses or business owners like yourself acquire knowledge and skills faster than anyone else, but more importantly, they change their behavior faster. This is known as the formula for growth, right? Rate of learning over rate of change. The quality of information you, so the rate of learning, which is the quality um, of information you learn, as well as how fast you learn it, and you know how many days a week you learn it, oh, plus the rate of change, which is how fast do you actually change? So if you, if you consume the information, that allows you to become a restaurant owner who makes a hundred thousand pounds a month. That is great. But as, if you don't implement it, you're not going to become a hundred thousand pound a month restaurant owner. So you need to learn the information, which I've literally given you on a platter. But the, the next step is you need to actually change. Cause if you don't change, nothing will change. And so what I want to ask you is that you allow yourself to change. But that being said, you know, now you have the knowledge, but also you need the execution and implementation of this model. So from your current situation, you have the knowledge. The main thing is you need to know how to execute it. Or you can actually, you know, let us, Novak Media, help you leverage us and implement our, our trained talent systems and infrastructure into your business to allow you to reach your desired outcome 10 times faster. Okay, so that's what we would do. We would bridge the gap completely for you. And so if you want us to implement this for you, design you a 120, 120 months, 120 day, which is around four months, um, 120 day uh, adding an extra 35,000 pounds in additional revenue plan for you then I'm going to break it down into five steps on how we would do that for you so the first step is we'll you know directly implement our high ticket offer creation as well as vertical scaling process to inject uh, inject cash into your business right high injection of cash straight off the bat the next thing that we do is we design your leverage acquisition system, right? Get more customers on demand. We'll take what, you know, you would have to spend four years of trial and errors, learning, implementing, creating systems for your own restaurant into a matter of 12 weeks. And this is, like I said, this is a complete step-by-step -step guide that we walk you through as well. The third thing that we do is we design and implement you our market leader branding model and process, right? We'd strategize, shoot, create, and scale your content and socials to develop you a high converting attention platform that actually generates more revenue for your business. The fourth thing that we'll do is we'll design and implement our leverage, uh, our leverage retention model, which will exponentially monthly grow your uh, revenue. Um, a lot of people don't understand the math is literally that, you know, if you have a restaurant that is doing a hundred thousand pounds per month and you get your customer attention to 50%, meaning that every single customer comes back at least once that month, only one more time that month. And you know, the average order value stays the same. You add an extra 50,000 pounds to your business that month alone. 
if you increase your customer, if, if your customer retention is 50%, you exponentially grow your restaurant by 50% every single month because you're getting new customers through the door, but you're also getting them, you're also getting 50% of them to come back one more time, which is insanely, insanely uh, valuable for your restaurant. And then lastly, what we'll do is we'll actually take everything we've built for you. We'll take the high ticket generating, the high ticket generating machine. We'll take the acquisition infrastructure. We'll take the content system as well as the retention model that we've built out custom plan to you and we'll release it to you so that you never have to pay another marketing agency ever again, making it a self-fulfilling machine. So we build this to convert automatically. So, you know, after the 120 days, um, uh, after the four months of working with us, we'll actually take this and give it to you once it's completely systemized. So you barely have to touch it more than once a month and it'll continually grow your restaurant, managing all the aspects that any marketing agency wished they could do for you for the next you know three to five years and charge you over a hundred thousand pounds in uh, their lifetime value of you which is absolutely insane right and so if you are interested and you want to speak with one of our growth consultants um or if you're already on a call with one of our growth consultants they're going to audit your current model your offer the retention mechanisms and most importantly your current client acquisition infrastructure as well as your branding game plan and then after the audit, we'll walk you through a personalized implementation roadmap that will ensure a step-by-step -step sequence to help your restaurant get to your revenue goals. Now, one thing that you might have, to, the one thing that you do need to understand is the reason we require this call is because we understand that a cookie cutter approach to scaling restaurants is one of the dumbest things to do. And every restaurant is different. Every restaurant has different problems, um, which is why we don't have a set price on the package. But if you are wondering about the price, like I said, is that we do a four month package where we go ahead and implement all the things I mentioned above and more, obviously. Um, the packages vary between six thousand pounds to ten thousand pounds over four months. Um, and like I said, no, we will never ever discount this because it's it's way too valuable, right? We're already selling this for a one tenth of the price. For example, like if Emmanuel's package cost him six thousand pounds and he's added twenty four thousand pounds in his first month of working with us, which is, you know, 240,000 plus in, in, in yearly recurring revenue uh, for 6,000 pounds, you know, anyone would do that. Anyone would pay 60,000 pounds for that, right? We could have charged Emmanuel 60,000 pounds for adding that much money to his revenue that he can continuously grow um, and scale for your, for his business. And so, like I said, we will never discount this ever way too valuable and already being sold at one tenth of the actual price, but price aside, the, what's important is this implementation call won't be available for everyone, right? Due to the fact that um, you have to qualify for it and you, your restaurant needs to, you, you know, people need to actually like your restaurant. You need to have at least a 4.2 stars on Google. Um, and more importantly, we need to know that you have proof of concept uh, because uh, we need to make sure you're making at least 40 to 45,000 pounds per month or more. And then the, the next thing is, and why this is limited is because this is a very demanding program, as you can see, meaning that we only take on six select restaurants every single month. And so if you haven't already booked a call with one of our growth consultants, then what I will say is you need to click the, I want an implementation call in the bio on the webpage that you're on. Or, you know, if you've already booked in a call and you're seeing this after you've booked in a call, then don't worry about that. But if you haven't, what you'll need to do is you'll need to fill out the application, pick a slot that works. Um, a, hopefully you'll be qualified and the system won't cancel your call because if you're if you're not qualified, the system will cancel your call. Um, then what will happen is you'll meet with the advisor who will figure out if you qualify for the audit and if you qualify for the audit um, and if the applications meet the criteria, you will then be selected and sent directly to the implementation call. And then all you have to do is show up to your call um, and, you know, um, uh, show up to your call and our growth consultant will walk you through that step-by-step -step implementation path for you. Okay. That being said, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I hope this was valuable for you. If you found this valuable and um, you know you had any questions, again, the growth consultation call is not for you to just decide whether this might be something that would help you or just get the um, or get the path implemented for you. We are going to do that regardless. The main thing is that we just want to make sure that you have clarity on what your restaurant needs in order for it to grow, whether that's with us or not. So. I hope you enjoyed this video, put a, a decent amount of effort into this to make sure that you understand why it's so important um, that you need to understand you have control over growing your restaurant and excuses like, you know, cost of living crisis and things of that sort are valid, but they're not limiting because this cost of living crisis doesn't mean your restaurant can't grow. And if you have a system that can make it grow, then it inevitably will. And if you have it, that works. And, 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 if, and if the system you're using works incredibly well, um, then, you know, you're, you're going to be in good hands and you're going to make, and we're going to make sure that, you know, you reach your revenue goal. So that being said, book a call with one of our growth consultants, if you haven't already. And if you have, I look forward to seeing if we can possibly help you um, with your future goals for your restaurant. Thanks. Cheers. Bye-bye.